Hello and welcome back to another installment to Pokefowder. In this video, we are talking about Catan. No, not Settlers of Catan. Catan World Explorers. It is the newest offering from the developer Niantic, along with Nerd Ninjas. And in case you aren't familiar with Niantic, they are the makers of Ingress, Harry Potter Wizards Unite, and then um, there was that one other game. Um, Pokemon Go. Yeah. That one. And anytime Niantic is involved in a project, the first question that comes to mind is, is this game another reskin of Pokemon Go? The answer in Catan is a resounding no. In fact, Catan more resembles Ingress than Pokemon Go because in Catan, your, your object, what you're trying to do is build up settlements. You're not trying to collect anything per se. I mean, you're, you're trying to collect resources. You, you got your brick and your ore and your wheat and your sheep and your wood but that's keeping true to the game you're trying to collect that kind of stuff you're not trying to collect monsters or fragments of past lives the goal of Catan world explorers is to build up your public settlements and earn victory points the faction or team with the most victory points at the end of a season is going to be declared the winner. Now bear with me as I go through this video because honestly I find this all very confusing. But thanks to some beta players in New Zealand, I do have live game footage. It'll either be over here or it'll be over here. Left and right doesn't work with me on a good day. When we're talking about video, it doesn't work at all. But I will also show some screenshots to kind of go over exactly what it is we are looking at. And if you want links to the original source for the video that I am showing up on the screen throughout this video, either here or here, there will be a link in the description below. After launching the game, as with all these other AR style games, you're going to go through a tutorial. After the tutorial, you are going to find your way onto the map. And since this is a game developed by Niantic and it is an augmented reality or geolocation game, you're going to have to move about the real world in order to fully play. And the reason why is because just like Wizards Unite, just like Pokemon Go, there are points of interest throughout the map, as you can see here on the screenshot. Let's break down the screenshot of the map screen. The first thing that you're going to notice in the upper left hand corner is your player avatar and player rank. Immediately under that is a chat bubble because yes, there is in-game chat. Moving a little bit further down the left side, you will see a daily recap. That is where you're going to have your daily missions. Your daily tasks are all gonna be housed here. Then down in the bottom left-hand corner, you will see a gold, a blue, and a red banner. Those are going to represent the three different factions. Remember I said this isn't exactly like Pokemon Go, but this is one similarity. You will choose your faction during this opening tutorial. And don't worry, you're not stuck with the faction that you choose at the start. You can change it later on. If you tap on the banners in the lower left hand corner, not only will you see your local victory points, but you will see a tally of the global victory points for your faction. The hip sack in the bottom middle of the screen is where you're gonna to go to find the numerous cards and these aren't the cards that you're gonna get, but you're gonna have a bunch of different cards, a lot of different cards actually, that you're going to be able to store, I think up to six, but this is where you're going to find them. The way you get these is through mini games and Catanians, which are NPC players that are going to spawn throughout the map. Moving along the bottom to the right, you will see a book and quill. That is where you're going to find the different quest menus. Moving all the way back up to the top right, you will see some what look like card slots in the number one. That is where active cards are going to be placed. As of right now, all that I'm sure of is like a Barufio's Brain Elixir or a Lucky Egg card, which are going to give you increased XP. XP is how you increase your settler level. Underneath that is a compass, so you always know which way is north. And finally, down the right side, you will see three dashes, and that is going to be how you find your different menus. Diving deeper into what is actually in the map as far as gameplay, you are going to see like a gold castle looking thing. That is going to be your personal settlement. Personal settlements are kind of a mini game that you're gonna to wanna to play either at your house, at your place of work, or at your school, wherever you're gonna spend a lot of time. You're gonna to wanna to have your personal settlement so you can tend to it in six hour intervals. Probably the thing that sticks out the most on the screen is the dark green and the little things that look kind of like tiles within the dark screen, that is a park. And this game, since it is the real world platform, it is Niantic, it uses open street maps. This is a designated park and that is where you're going to pick up resource tiles. 
um, in this particular situation, brick and ore are the two resource tiles. Now, one thing that I don't really understand, in fact, I don't understand at all, is the globe is broken up into different cells, and then those cells are broken up even further by cell phone companies to do something with cellular coverage. Like I said, I don't understand this in any way, shape, or form, but this game is broken up into different cells. Now, within each cell, it seems that there are two predominant resources of the, hold on, hold on, of the five total available, two are going to be predominant in your area. So in this particular case, again, brick and ore are the two predominant resources. This is going to be important later on. The next thing you're probably going to notice is the points of interest. Points of interest can either be public settlements or resources, and you will see two brick resource points of interest. The way you claim the brick off of these is by slashing them. Two more things to notice about the map screen is there are two silver or gray looking points of interest. One of them is a resource points of interest that can't be reached because it is in a gated community. The other is an unopened public settlement. So how do you get victory points? Well, you build up your faction's public settlement. The way you do this is by using resources, five remember, using your resources to build buildings. This is actually a very complex system because you are limited to two in your cell, but you actually are going to need a combination of all five in order to build different buildings. These different buildings are going to give you different trade-in values on your resources. So if you have a lot of brick and you have a lot of ore, you can trade them in at a six to one ratio when you first start the game. But as your settlements get bigger, those ratios can change. I've seen as low as three to one. Now, while all this seems extremely simple to understand and on the surface it is, there's actually a lot of strategy and maneuvering that needs to happen. That's actually going to be a video all by itself because it's actually pretty complex. The good news here is no matter which faction you're a part of, the other two factions cannot tear down what it is you've built. You can only build upon what your other faction members have built. So when can you download and play Catan World Explorer? Well, it just opened up in New Zealand for beta on iOS and Android. If you are outside of New Zealand, you can actually download the APK on an Android device if you know how to do that. Problem is, the map will not be populated with points of interest. If they are to follow the same release pattern as with Wizards Unite, you can expect New Zealand to have beta for probably three to four weeks before Australia gets it. After Australia, it'll probably be another three to four weeks before we start looking at a global launch. But remember, we are in the middle of a pandemic and that could delay timing. If I had to guess, I would say that the earliest this game will reach the United States shores is probably going to be the fall. But let me know what you think. If you are playing other augmented reality games, do you even have time or desire to learn how to play a new one? Or is the one you're playing plenty? Let me know down in the comments below and let me know if there's anything specifically you want me to try to cover. This seems like a very deep game and a lot of times because I can't actually play it myself, I have to get explanations over and over and over until I fully understand what it is that I'm looking at. That's all I've got for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time.